Well, hi there, students. This is Mr. Verzat. Today we're going to discuss value drawing, and more specifically, a light source. What is a light source? Well, a light source is very important. It's one of the very first things that you consider in a piece of artwork that you make. It applies to any medium, not just drawing, but also painting, sculpting. Not only that, where you're going to put your work in a gallery. I had a painting that I did in college, and before I even started the painting, I went to the place where my painting was going to hang on the wall. I looked at where the lights were at, and inside the painting, I made sure my light source matched where the lights would be inside the gallery. So when I hung on the wall, wherever the light shone from on top of the ceiling, matched where the light was inside my painting, and it had a really cool effect. So light source comes into play in a lot of areas. A light source is important because it's light that makes things visible. The only, even, the only reason we can even see anything is because those photons are bouncing off of the surface that is being hit by the light. And it's also the key to drawing things realistically. Your light source helps you know where to put your values, those different shades of light and dark that make your piece look real. This piece has a classic example of the three parts of a light source. Those three parts are called a highlight, a midtone, and a shade. Now let's look at this. We've got some parts of this form that are pure white, some parts that are like a medium gray, and other parts that are a very dark, dark gray or a black. Those have the three parts of a light source. So some facts and characteristics. A light source is required before you even start your piece. You need to know that first. It helps you know where your lights and darks go. So there's a method behind it. For example, this light that's shining on me, if you could see the light shining and my shadows were on the wrong side, it would look pretty weird, so you want to avoid it. It's a science. It's, a, it's an actual standard where the light falls. So how do you know where your light sources go? First, you need to know where your light source is at. And sometimes that could be a mark on your paper to help guide you. Other times it could be in your imagination. Also, you need to know that light travels in a specific direction. The part of a form that's directly hit by the light is called a highlight. The second piece of value is what's called a midtone. That's the part of a form that's indirectly hit, meaning the light isn't smack dab on it, but it's still getting just enough light to give it kind of a different shade of gray. And the third part is a shade. The shade is the part that is on the opposite side of where the light is coming from. So if your light is coming this way and it hits a surface, your shade is going to be on the opposite side of that form. So where does your midtone go? Well, the midtone almost always goes between the highlight and the shade. You'll rarely, if ever, see a shade next to a highlight. The midtone is always adjacent or next to the highlight. It's also always adjacent or next to the shade. So let's look at some examples. Now that you know placement of where your values go, this just breaks it down like a map. Now let's assume that the light source for this cube right here on the very top is directly above the cube, almost like a lamp being hung from the ceiling directly above it. Well, if that's where the light source is going and the light source is traveling down, then you'll know where the highlight is because it's the part that gets directly hit. We know where the midtones are because those are the parts directly adjacent to where the highlight's at. So where is the shade? Where's the shadow at? Well, we can't see it. Assuming this cube was sitting on a table, we wouldn't be able to see the dark part on the bottom, which is where the shade would be. Now this cube on the bottom represents that dark part as if we could see through it. And I just drew the shade on the bottom to help you. So this is a guide just to kind of be a road map to help you know where your values go. Now if this cube were hovering in space, it would also cast a shadow on any surface that's beneath it. Because that cube's in the way of the light. That's why shadows exist. Let's look at some non-examples. These are the two most common mistakes I see in beginning artists. The first is a what I call a misunderstanding of the concept. As you can see, we've got a highlight next to two shades. That should be physically impossible. Where's the midtone at? Midtone is always between the two. So this just is a misunderstanding of where the values go. I see it frequently, especially on shading assignments. If the light source is, say, over here, I frequently see shades on the wrong side of a cube. You need to be mindful of where your light source goes. The second mistake that I see is assuming that all you need to do to even shade something is to add a few marks on one side of the form, and then that counts as shading. That couldn't be further from the truth. Let's look at the example in the middle of the page really quick. This sculpture is basically a whole bunch of planes. A plane is a surface or an area defined on all sides. And where there's a plane, the entire plane is full of something, whether it's full of highlight, full of midtone, or full of shade. So never in real life do you ever see something that is like just adding a small dark spot to make something look 3D. To make things look real, you need a lot of different types of grays, not just white, gray, and black, but all the little different range in between. And that's what makes this look realistic. 
This bottom cube tells me one of two things of a beginning student. Either A, it's just a lack of a basic understanding of how the process goes, or it just reflects the student that could care less and just wants to get it out of the way. Neither of those will earn you credit on the assignment, no matter how long it takes you to work on it. So here's what will help you. Consider value. Consider shading. Think of it like painting. When you paint, you cover whole portions of things with paint. And when you paint, there really isn't anything uncovered. You cover the whole thing with the whole canvas with paint, basically. The same thing happens in value drawing. And as you'll learn in the future, the highlight, the part of the paper where there's nothing touching it, that's the smallest. 90 to 95 percent of your paper is going to be covered in lead if it's correctly shaded. So let's summarize. A light source is required for pretty much every type of medium in art. Light travels in a specific direction. A light source needs to come from a specific area. The place where the light directly hits, it's a highlight. It's the brightest. The part of a form that's indirectly hit, that's called the midtone. And finally, the shade is located on the opposite side of the form where the light's been hit. So I hope that's helpful. As always, if there's anything that you don't understand or haven't gotten down, rewind the screencast and watch it over again. Also, we're going to get plenty of practice in class. So if you have a question, please feel free to ask me. I will do the best I can to answer it for you. But most likely, I'll point you to the direction where you can find the answer yourself. So I look forward to seeing you in class, and take care. Bye.